So I'm a 37 year old firefighter and this is what it's like to date in today's modern society. I get a ton of matches on dating apps, but oh my God, the amount of ghosting happening is unbelievable. I actually got off the dating apps and I figured, hey, why don't I just do my thing? So I was going for a run one day and uh, this really pretty girl made eye contact with me and I ended up getting her number. Guess what? She ghosted too. <laughs> I guess it just doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, I'm just going to do my own thing. I don't know. I kind of give up. So I was just making this video and as I was about to hit uh, next on to publish it, guess who texted me? The same girl from the park. Wow. What a weird freaking weird thing that's happening. Uh, still, I don't really have any high hopes. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. Hey guys, real quick before I continue this video, 90% of you guys watching this video are not subscribed to my channel and I need to change that dynamic around a little bit. So please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to like the video, make sure to comment on the video, share the video, hit the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I drop new videos so I can keep this channel going. I really do appreciate you guys. Now let's get back to the video. Thanks. At this point, I feel like I'm going to be single forever. That's it, bro. I feel like I'm going to be single forever. I was going to go on a date. There was a girl that I was talking to for about two months, and I was like, you know what? This could go somewhere. I could see this going somewhere. So I had asked, hey, would you want to go to a date to this place? She said, yeah, cool. I bet. So... I get to the place, like, I want to say 15 minutes early. I go ahead and get the table. I go ahead and, like, get all dressed up. I tell the waiter, you know what I'm saying, like, she might order this, this, and this. I don't know, but, like, it's, it's whatever, right? I'm ready to pay for anything when it comes to the date. She's like, hey, I'm at home still. And I'm like, okay, cool. Do you need me to pick you up? Do you want me to get you an Uber? I can get you an Uber here and back if you want. She says, no. If it's cool, can you send me gas money? I can drive my own car. I don't want somebody else to drive me. I'm like, I bet. So I'm sitting in the restaurant. She says she's 10 minutes away from the place. I'm like, here you go. I send her $25 in gas. She starts doing like the type thing and then it stops. And I'm like, okay, should I call her? Like, is she going to show up? Right. The $25 already sent. The $25 already sent. Right. She going to say, this all you going to send? And I'm like, how much gas do you need? to get from here back home. Like, am I supposed to supply you for gas throughout the week? Am I supposed to supply you for enough gas so you can get to work every single day? Like, what is going on? Like, am I taking care of you? So I text back, yeah, is 25 not enough? Like, what are you driving, a Hummer? Like, what, what are you driving? Are you driving like a diesel truck? What the, what, what you whipping in? She's like, no, nah, that's not enough. Can you send like five more? So I'm like, no, the fuck? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? And she's like, oh, so you broke broke. And I'm like, what do you mean broke broke? What do you mean broke broke? You are asking me for gas money to come to a date that is completely paid for. You're getting a free meal and conversation and we're going to learn about each other. But from what I'm learning right here, you're the one that's like egregious. So then she's like, F it. I'm not going to come. So now me sitting in the middle of the restaurant, no food order. I just got a drink. I got $25 out inside of the Cosmos. I'm like, okay, cool. Can you send me the 25 back? This chick gonna be like, you stressing over $25? What do you mean I'm stressing over $25? Yes, that's my 25. I gave you $25 so you could use gas money to get here. I was going to get you an Uber so you could get here. I was going to come pick you up so you could get here. Bro, I'm done with these chicks, bro. They tripping, tripping. I'm talking about trifling, trifling. I just seen another video of a dude that straight up a friend, his friend, that was a girl, invited him to another girl's birthday party. While at the birthday party, he's eating and everybody's ordering like big stuff. Lobster tails, crab legs, do things, a steak, eight different desserts. He's talking about his bill came up to $120 and he had went ahead and went to the bathroom to pay for it. He then went back to the table. And when the original bill got to the table, the waiter said, I can only split this two ways. How are we going to do it? Everybody looking around. He looking around. Everybody looking around. He like... I'm going to go. And he go to stand up to leave. The person that's over everything is like, hey, where you going? You you ain't going to pay? The waiter like, no, nah, he already paid. This man gets home and get a text from his friend talking about, um, 
that was so rude of you to leave and it wasn't manly of you to... Bro, what is going on, bro? What do you mean not manly of me? I paid for my own meal. I paid for everything I ate. That other stuff is up to y'all. Because when it comes to people giving your money back, they won't. They will not. So if you put all of that money onto your card, you're not going to get everything back because they might not give back tip. They might not give a tip to the waiter. They might not pay the taxes on what they got. They might pay for exactly what they got. And all that extra funds is in your hands. So if you're going on a date and a girl is like, hey, can you send me some gas money? I can pick you up and get you an Uber because there's a big chance she ain't going to show up and you ain't going to get your gas money back. So I guess Tinder horror stories are all the rave right now, and I think this one's going to be tough to beat, okay? So I was talking to this girl for a couple days. We decided to get together, go out and get an appetizer. So I meet her. She looks like her photo's perfect. We sit down, and without me getting a word in, this girl starts going off telling me about how most of her family members are in mental institutions with schizophrenia. Then she tells me this morbid story about watching her best friend die because he was driving drunk. Then she tells me that if she was to ever get pregnant, that she would keep it if it's a boy, but she wouldn't keep it if it's a girl, because she doesn't want to raise a girl in this society. So at this point, I excuse myself for the washroom, and I'm standing there looking at myself in the mirror, like, bro, like, you should just leave. Just walk out the door, it's fine. But I was like, no, I invited her out, I'm gonna see this through, I'll, like, pay the bill. So I go sit back down, and the food comes, and I've had, like, two or three bites, and she goes, do you know what eczema is? And I'm like... Uh, yeah, that's like that's that rash that people get. She's like, yeah, so I have that on my feet. And I'm like, oh, like, uh, sorry? Like, it's wh whatever, like, it's not a big deal. People get it. And she's like, want to see? I'm like, no, not really. Like, I'm eating right now. And she pulls out her phone and she starts showing me photos of the most disgusting, rotten feet I have ever seen. Oh, I'm still so traumatized. <laughs> anyway, I'm like, please stop. Like, I don't want to see this right now. And she just, like, keeps putting the phone in my face. And me like, no, no, look, look, look. And at this point, I'm like, this is a prank. Like, somebody has hired her. Maybe she knows one of my exes or something like that. Like, there's no way. But she just wouldn't stop. So anyway, I, I'd, like, get the bill, pay it. And I'm like, like, it's time to go. So I'm waiting with her for her Uber to come at this point. And now she's, like, trying to come home with me. And I'm like, no, like... This, no, this did not go well. Like, it's time for you to leave. All right, more of my dating nightmares, part two. So now I live in Tennessee, first date in Tennessee. So met this girl on Tinder, talked for about a week. Okay, awesome. Uh, conversation was dry, to say the least. So anyway, set up a date to go get drinks. So I just moved here, told her I don't know any good spots, just whatever your favorite bar is near us, let's go ahead and meet there. Okay, great. She says, this is what time I want to meet. Awesome. So I'll text you when I get there. So I'm on my way. She texts me, hey, I got here a little early. I'm going to be at the inside bar. Just let me know when you get here. Okay, no problem. So I get there, text her, I'm here. As I'm walking in, walk past the host, and then I'm within earshot of the bar now, and I hear the bartender go to her, oh, you've had a busy week. So it's like, ugh, okay red flag alert, like kind of going off already. So sitting there talking with her, everything was going pretty normal for the most part, just general first date stuff, talking about why I moved to Tennessee, how long she's been here, what do you do for work, yada, yada. So well, about 45 minutes passes and I get up to go to the bathroom. So standing at the urinal, which is a great time to talk to anybody, but the bartender comes in and goes, hey man, just so you know, you're the fourth dude she's brought here this week. I went, motherfucker. I was like, I knew it. I was like, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Like, I fist bumped you, but I got to wash my hands. So that was date one in Tennessee. Date two in Tennessee, met a girl on Bumble. Okay. So my profile is very specific as to what I'm looking for. Now, I travel quite a bit. So when I say travel, it's not like road trips. Like I go to different countries and spend a decent amount of time there, either backpacking, like whatever have you. So... I have their don't have any tie downs. I'm also not looking for someone with children. So talking to this girl about four days, she said she wants to go to dinner. I was like, okay, let's do lunch. Like I'm pretty sick of dinner dates at this point. Like if you watch watched my first video, none of them have gone well. So got lunch, we're sitting there talking. So I'm to the point now, it's like, I'm 32 years old. I don't want to waste time. It's like, I'm, what do you want? What are you looking for? And so got to that point of the conversation she goes well i'm looking for someone to provide for me and my three kids i'm sitting here like what i was like my profile specifically says like 
I'm not looking for someone with kids and your profile doesn't have anything about children. Like it doesn't say you have kids, open to kids, doesn't have any photos of your kids, which I think is weird anyway on social media, but I get it. But, um, come on. It's like, okay. So I mean, don't get me wrong. You're a good person. But for me, what I'm looking for, it's just not it. All right. So now deleted all my dating apps at this point. I go to this bar locally to play pool every week, started hitting it off with one of the bartenders, absolutely beautiful woman. So started hitting it off, went really well. So ask her, hey, would you want to go do something sometime? She goes, yeah, I'm a real outdoorsy person. So we decided to go on a waterfall hike. Great first date, like couldn't have gone any better. So decided to keep, continue going. Day two, went on a kayaking tour. Day three, went on another hike, then went to dinner. Everything's going great. A couple weeks go by. I've now met all of her coworkers. They love me. So gone out a couple times. We went out on the boat. Did a little like she did a little drinking again. I don't drink. So while we're while we're floating around there, she's telling me how obsessed with me she is and how perfect I am for her and how happy she is with me, which is like awesome. I'm really enjoying this too. This is such a breath of fresh air, especially with everything I've gone through. She knows all of these stories as well. So went through that, also went through what I went through with my ex fiance when we ended up breaking up. So she knows that I have past trauma that I've worked on. I've gone to therapy now for a couple of years because of it, but ended up taking some time off because I moved to Tennessee. But anyway, so a couple of months goes by, four months goes by. We go out for July 4th. Again, she asked me to be designated driver. She wants to drink tonight. She asked if her sister can come, awesome. So that's fine with me, ended up taking them. We had a great night, 4th of July out on the lake. Everything was perfect, floating around with the fireworks going off, super romantic, great night. So we leave the lake probably about 2.33 in the morning, go drop her sister off, uh, stopped at a gas station to get food. So she stopped in the middle of the aisle and looked at me and she goes, I love you. And I'm sitting here like, I really, really don't wanna hear that when you're drunk. So I thought that in my head. So my response to her was like, hey, I'm, I appreciate that. Like, I'm really enjoying our time together as well. I definitely see this as a serious relationship moving forward. And like, I'm really happy I'm with you. So get back in the car. Everything was great. Talking, holding hands all the way home, yada, yada. She stays with me. This is where it turns back. So July 5th comes around, that's the next day. She ends up going home like midway through the day. She's super hungover, wants to sleep the rest of the day. Okay, great. She goes home, texts me when she gets up, sends me all the like, arts and crafts stuff she's doing at home because she's into that stuff. Awesome. So I go to bed early, I wake up the next morning and I have a text from her that says, hey, I really think I need some space. Um, I was like, okay, can we talk in person about it? And so she's like, I guess. So we ended up meeting at a park. So started to have a conversation and she started to bring up all sorts of things that had never been in conversation before about what's wrong and that she wanted to end it. And then in that same conversation went back to it being a break and she needs space to figure out what she wants. Okay. Take your two weeks, take your time, whatever you need. Like, let me know. I'm not going to text you, but I'm also old enough and have been through this enough times to where I know that I need space is just the pre breakup talk. So two weeks goes by, no contact at all. Didn't go see her at work, nothing. She randomly texts me out of the blue. Hey, breaking up is for sure what I want. I hope or I genuinely think we could still be friends. I'm sitting here like, how can you go from I'm obsessed with you. You're perfect. I love you to two days later, you need space, to two weeks later, you wanna break up. So it's like, I've gone through enough therapy, I understand dismissive avoidant attachment style, and that's exactly what that is, but it's like, God damn, bro. It's like, I really liked that one too. Like, I really wanted that one to work out. Great relationship up until that very point, but if you can't communicate, then there's no point in a relationship in my eyes. But for right now, man, this is exactly why I'm just tapping out of the dating world for right now. It's just, it's a mess. And then when you finally get something that you think is really, really good out of nowhere in their head the whole time, it's been rough and you were led to believe it was going great. So yeah, staying single for right now, just 
doing my own thing and do not plan on getting back in the dating pool anytime soon. So if dating sucks for you out there, I completely get it. Stay single, my friends. The reason why a lot of us guys are done with dating is because we're all honestly fed up with all the mixed answers that we've been seeing online. Like women are saying online, why don't guys approach in public more? Or why is this guy approaching me? I don't want anybody talking to me anywhere in public. So a lot of us have reached a point that we're just like, fuck it, man. Like we're just done. And believe me, we don't want to. We would love to approach a woman without her feeling like we're creeps or something. And don't get me wrong either. There's a lot of guys that don't know how to approach women or they make it seem very creepy or they're or they start stalking you and following you randomly. Guys like that put out a bad name for the good men. But for the good men with good intentions, it does make it extremely challenging. But I do wish that women can see how difficult it is for us men to cold approach because that shit is not fucking easy. So I need to tell you all this story. And, and you know, if, if, right out the gate, don't act like fellas. This is mainly for the fellas. Maybe the girls too. I don't know. But guys, don't act like y'all no, haven't done this. Okay. So I went out on this date. And it was going great. It was a great day. Great day. Great, great everything. Everything was great. But midway through the day, I'm not a big Mexican food guy. I'm not a big Mexican food guy. Okay? I don't like it. All right? It doesn't sh sit with me well, shall we say. And about halfway through the day, started getting some rumbles. Right? Excuse myself. You know, went to the restroom. Nothing happening. Whatever. This is going to be a nasty story. I don't care. But it, it, I feel like I got to tell someone, and y'all are who I'm telling. So we're like, hey, going to a movie. Made it through the movie. From just every fiber in my soul is holding in what I know to be the biggest fart in the history of man. And I am doing everything in my power, everything in my power, not to unleash the, the Satan spawn. Okay. And I am, I am, I mean, at points it is so bad. You guys, you know what I'm talking about where you do the lean forward thing. You know, you do the lean, th the lean forward thing, trying to release some of the pressure, and it, you, the sweat drops are starting to form. It's serious. It is fucking serious. So finally, the, and at the beginning of the date, my finally, the date was over, was not going to be that same night. I was not even going to lie to you. You know, you hope it carries over to the next morning. But no, not this. This, I was praying for everything, that this was a good girl, and I was going to be sent on my way. So finally... You know, I pulled back to, up to her place, you know, give her a hug and get a little, little pet goodnight. And as I'm, you know, as I turn around, she goes to the house. I turn around to walk back to my truck. As I turn around, because, you know, she had gone inside. As I turn around, bro, I unleash after about three or four steps. Probably the big, the the biggest part, so big. It, it, it is so big and it goes for so long. You actually start to fucking laugh. Okay, and I mouth out the words, oh, thank my Lanta. Thank God. I mean, you know, just thanking God and everything. What I didn't realize was I had forgotten that I gave her my keys to hold in her purse. And as the end of the fart, you know, as the end of the fart comes out and, you know, it's like that. It's like a two, the, the end part is like the two year old boat blowing out the birthday candles. <laughs> Into the and it's like uh, I hear I hear like a little <clears throat> and and my color and everything had to have been white and I'm like please no please 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 no I turn around and there she was standing for the entire thing like never I guess she had come back outside I took like that my third step. She's in the direct line of fire. I can tell she's trying to be nice about it, but she actually does that number. She hits with a dry heave because, once again, as I said, Mexican food doesn't agree with me. She hits with the... Uh, I don't think I'm going to be getting a second date. What do you think? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure the... Uh, uh, but I think that sealed it. What do y'all say? It's 2024. 
And if a dude is trying to approach you, especially if he approach you respectfully, a simple no will suffice. You ain't got to do nothing extra. You ain't got to say nothing extra. I tried to approach this young lady, you know, asked her for her number or whatever. And she was like, no, thank you. Cool. You know what I'm saying? Before I can say, all right, I appreciate it anyway. This motherfucker said, the fuck? Now it's a whole different situation. Because why did you even have to add that part? No, thank you. The fuck? The fuck will turn the nicest statement into a, a, a verbal assault. The fuck? That's like, I have no chance. I'm a decent looking dude. If you're not interested, that's fine. But don't the fuck me. No, thank you. The fuck? Bitch. Back when I was dating, there were no dating apps. You know, now dating feels like it's become sort of a an endless cycle. You know, women seem to be just looking for the next compliment or bit of attention. And men, I don't know, the guys seem to be just swiping for the next physical thrill. And though I don't think everybody's that way. I'm making kind of a generalized statement about the state of how things are on dating apps. I'm sure there's lots of people out there who've met the love of their life and have great relationships. I'm sure those exist too. But for most of us, I mean, is anybody really benefiting from all of this? I just wonder if maybe it's not time to try to stop the merry-go-round. Everybody get off and take a look at this and see if anybody really feels fulfilled. Are we better off? Are we happy? Or should we try to go back to a simpler time? I don't know. What do you think? May the force be with you. <laughs>